Hello, in this video I'm going to be talking about Streptococcus pneumoniae. This is a gram-positive facultative anaerobe and it is responsible for diseases such as meningitis, pneumonia, and streptocemia. I have written this little comic which talks about the pathogenesis of Streptococcus pneumoniae leading to meningitis and that's going to be the focus of this video and this narration. So as you may be able to see just from reading the first few text bubbles of this, you may notice that it's an opportunistic pathogen. This means it is looking for people with compromised immune systems. This may be younger people, elderly people, or just people with certain autoimmune disorders. All of this creates the opportunity for Streptococcus pneumoniae to colonize its host. It colonizes its host and uses droplets and enters through the nasopharynx where it uses its polysaccharide capsules to evade capture from host immune cells and allows it to colonize and a few host immune cells that exist in these people with compromised immune systems and it also uses neuraminidase to help degrade the mucus so it's able to colonize better. It will then move into the epithelial cells and it also has pili and other structures which are going to allow it to colonize. But at this point, we will see that it has pneumolysins and autolysins, which are going, which are lytic enzymes, and it also has lipotechoic acid, which will help lyse the cells. It also has proteins, which are going to help along the structure. And the creation of biofilms also help it evade and hide from host immune cells. So this all allows it to colonize and continue to lyse these cells. This lysis creates an inflammatory response. This inflammatory response only worsens once host immune cells become involved. And this creates the opportunity for this particular pathogen, for the, strep, uh, the streptococcus pneumoniae, to continue from the epithelial cells and eventually make its way into the blood-brain barrier and get by the astrocytes. This creates only a larger inflammatory response, but this, again, only is helping this pathogen. It creates a perfect opportunity for it to continue to damage the cells with these lytic enzymes. It finally finds a place to set up in the meninges, which are these protective layers of the brain. You have the dura mater, the arachnoid mater, and the pia mater, which are all layers to help protect the brain. And it gets in through the cerebral spinal fluid, especially near the arachnoid mater, where there's these arachnoid granulations. At this point, we can see it just to begin to lyse cells, and it can lyse brain tissue and harm so much of the body as it starts to destroy some of this tissue with these enzymes, especially the, the pneumolysins. At this point, we can see, because of these responses, of course, a higher temperature, pain, stiffness in the neck and joints, spots, rashes, and people often have confusion. Even once we treat this with a antibiotic and medical treatment, we often will see a sequela afterward which may have hearing loss or epilepsy or neurological impairment or cognitive impairment. And this truly is because of these lytic enzymes released by this bacteria in order for it to continue to grow and colonize the host where we see there are these continued responses. So that is just a brief overview of the pathogenesis of Streptococcus pneumoniae as it relates to developing into meningitis. Thank you.